Singapore doors are all operating on time, and we have no reported delays from bus operations on any buses. Back to you. Well, that is good news. Wish I could say the same for the roads. We're going to take a look first at the 401. Westbound on the 401, just west of the Allen, a collision still has the two left lanes blocked as well. Problems eastbound on the 401, east of the 400, a collision blocking the two right lanes with traffic getting around. Plus, problems on the TTC, the Young Line. No service between Eglinton and York Mills, and that is because of problems at Lawrence. We'll have uh, all of those details coming up for you in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Your next traffic update is just a few minutes away. Back to Animal House Calls. We've featured various service dogs on our show in the past. Today we're going to find out about dogs who help children who have autism. Joining us live right now, Wade Beatty, founder and director of Autism Dog Services. Welcome. Thank you. Who's this with you? This is Rocky. He's a, a two-year-old yellow lab. And is he in training? He is, yes. He's been with me for about uh, four months. And I got him from uh, a rescue from the SBCA in Hamilton. That's wonderful. Most people think that dogs in training are puppies and that they, as they go into young adulthood, they are ready then to be paired with, some, with a client. That's right. In this case, this was giving that dog a new leash on life, but in turn, an, a family where there's a child with autism is going to get a new leash on life as oh, well, or lease. Very true. V very true. I was lucky to, uh, to find Rocky. He has a, has a wonderful disposition and temperament, very calm, and that's what I really look for for the kids. We don't see, I mean, he's looking at you. He absolutely adores you. Can we yeah. uh, maybe just, it, and feel free yeah. to just jump off for a second. Love to see yeah. what he really looks like. Come so here, what Rock. was it? You, you said that calm, good disposition. What else do you look for when you are choosing a dog to be part of the the program. Yeah, the breeds that we commonly use are Labrador Retrievers, like, like Rocky. We also use go Golden Retrievers. But it's really the, their willingness to please, their gentleness, their, their social Now again, we're just getting the back skills. side of Rocky. Oh, oh. There we go. Can Maybe give hello? Brent a cookie. He might eat it, yeah, but if not, he <laughs> can give it to Rocky. Say hello. There we, thanks, Brent, for that. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. So what kind of training are the dogs put through, whatever age you get them at? Yeah, typically I, I get puppies from uh, local breeders at eight weeks of age. Are they donated by the breeder? They are donated. Okay. I'm fortunate enough to have so many great people um, involved in the program. I have lots of partnerships. Um, one is uh, with Yukonuba, and they, they donate all the food to all the puppies and the dogs in the program, and that is an uh, incredible uh, plus for for me and uh, and all the dogs, of course. The other plus is foster homes who open up their yeah. doors, their hearts, their yeah. homes, their families to yeah. these dogs while they're in training. What kind of what role yeah. do they play in the dogs' training? Yeah, if it wasn't for the foster families, I wouldn't have a program. So really, it's based on the families. Rock, Rock, come over and say hello. Yeah, it's really based on the on the family socializing the puppies to everyday situations and exposures. Because they have to be used to malls and restaurants and all kinds of busy, busy places, including schools. So they have to be sound, have to be comfortable, and they have to be excellent with, with people as well. So it's, it it's take, takes well. a lot of work. It's just been a few months here. I know he's a little apprehensive of the camera, just, but who wouldn't be? First time in, you know, he's yeah. handling it very well. He's okay. Good do boy. You, you're beginning to learn the things that he's uncomfortable with. So how do you yeah. deal with that before you yeah. send the dog to a family? Yeah, it's just really lots of months of uh, exposure, taking him to so many different places you know busy busy centers busy streets traffic lots of people so he meets uh, many different people every day what do you do differently that that from say uh, uh, seeing eye dog or a hearing ear dog what would you do that in the training that would help Rocky become yeah. a dog that's going to help a child with autism yeah it's, it's a dog's tolerance of, of kids um, being very calm around children I, I take the dogs to schools and uh, you know lots of different places around around children. And so they're comfortable they're with very active, exactly. uh, you know, yeah, that, sporadic kind of uh, energy. Yeah, the, the behavior in an autistic child has to be simulated for the dogs to be comfortable with. So that's really the big, the big part. Of and the, what of these difference dogs. does a dog like this make to a family's life where the child yeah. is autistic, uh, or the child uh, yeah. himself or herself? Well, it's been it's been. Uh, <sighs> A great journey for me to work with the kids and the families and really the benefit is safety 
most most uh, autistic children are, are a flight risk. What does that mean? So, so yeah, they'll bolt, bolt into dangerous situa situations, even onto busy roads, so the dogs can prevent them from from bolting off. They can walk independently with their dog rather than being held onto by a, by an adult. And of course, companionship. Most autistic children don't have friends, so they have a constant friend in their life that goes with them everywhere. And places that they're very uncomfortable with or they have anxiety or, or um, nervousness in malls and restaurants and, uh, and even uh, places like Walt Disney World. I know a lot of children have gone with their dogs and have done very, very well. A sense of belonging. So yeah. you train the dog. Do you train the family as well? I do. Yeah, that's, that's really the key, the whole matching process. And then I work with one or both parents, and I teach them all the care and all the handling that, that's necessary. And then once the parents really get to know the dog and they, they know the handling, then I'll start to work with the, the autistic child and bonding and, and going out in public with the dog. How many families are you... Um, joining together with these wonderfully trained dogs. How many people are you making happy every year? <laughs> yeah, right now my program is fairly small, so about a dozen a year. But that's a dozen families that, uh, yes. that have a dog like Rocky helping out in a situation that's challenging. Very true, yeah. It's, 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 it's wonderful to not only work with the kids but the entire family because I, I, I truly believe the whole family benefits from, from having a dog and, and, the ther and, and as a family they can all go out now to a restaurant or to the park and play, things that they, they may not ha have been able to do before. So the dog can wear the, the coat that says, I'm a working dog, I'm a service dog, right. and can be allowed into places where service dogs are allowed. Yeah, they have full public access, Great. so they can go everywhere that you and I can That's fantastic. go. Fantastic. And what difference yeah. have you seen in the lives of those uh, who are autistic? Just, you know, just having a friend, a constant friend with them, the security of having a dog with them, in, in, in environments that they, they don't have uh, a lot of comfort in. And even school, a lot of the kids that I work with will take their dog to school. And, and just to have um, a dog to, to meet and greet people, so that, that, that uh, icebreaker to, to promote greater contact and communication with people. So I've seen just wonderful benefits. Um, with so many kids kids and their families. I say a sense of belonging for oh, both the person and the dog. Yeah, very true. Nice to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. You for and me lovely and Rocky. to see Rocky. And if people want more information about how they can help, how they can access your service, anything that you need as a as a charitable organization to keep on going, they can head yes. to your website. That's that's right. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're gonna take a short break here on Animal House Calls. Coming up Beautiful next, way. we'll preview the canine rescue me calendar. Looking forward to that. P24, Toronto's breaking news. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm just a regular guy. Clyde has a brain. He figured out how to kill people without ever being in the same room. You saying we can't stop him? If Clyde wants you dead, you're dead. Law-abiding citizen in theaters Friday. Hello. I need to make an appointment to speak to someone. You don't need to make an appointment. Brian here can see you right away. But appointments are important. They give the world structure. Okay, well, how about we meet about 2 o'clock then? 2 o'clock works. Talk to us anytime you want at TD Canada Trust. It's how we're making banking more comfortable. I'm Dr. Richard Lim, founder of the Low Back Clinic. You may have heard of us from your family doctor or from one of the many news reports profiling our clinic. The Low Back Clinic uses specialized non-surgical treatment for the treatment of severe neck and back pain. If other therapies have not worked for you, you're considering surgery or are taking handfuls of medication, you may be a candidate for our care. If you or someone you know is suffering from neck or back pain, call to book your free consultation at your nearest Low Back Clinic. Call 1-877-LBC-8383 or lowbackclinic.com. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm just a regular guy. Clyde has a brain. He figured out how to kill people without ever being in the same room. You saying we can't stop him? If Clyde wants you dead, you're dead. Law-abiding citizen in theaters Friday. CP24 traffic. 
It's time once again for your CP24 traffic update. This time, updating us on some earlier problems we had on the Young subway line. Kevin Carrington, what's up? Hey, you know what's up? I got good news. Earlier problems and early delays that we had in our Young line have now cleared. Service there and on the rest of our subways now looking good. In town, we have some overhead delays and overhead problems uh, that will affect our streetcars northbound Bathurst at Queen. So watch out for that. By now, you must be tired of your turkey. So tomorrow, we'll have pizza on sale at many of our stations. So hey. Be nice, buy a slice. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Wish we had better news on the major routes. We do not. We still have problems on the go. Westbound on the 401 in the express lanes. West